Hello everybody, Science1324 here, and today I've got a super cool video for you. It's how to build a solar heater, which is this one I've got here behind me. I actually recorded the process as I was making it, and I want to show you guys how I did it. And if you guys enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So this was my final product. As you can tell, it's not super finished looking yet. Uh, this is just a first prototype for me. It's held together with metal, duct tape, and that's basically to make it easy enough for me to take apart if I need to adjust anything or change anything. So the first thing I had to do to build this was cut the top and the bottom out of a whole bunch of pop cans. And I ended up cutting the top and bottom out of 64 cans in order to get enough to fill this whole thing up and it took forever and I basically almost couldn't feel my hands by the time I was done. And right here you can actually see me uh, massage my shoulder a little bit because my shoulders were killing me and I had just barely started at this point. And this is when I was finally getting close to the end and as you can see there is a ton of pop cans and it took me a while to actually collect this many. And of course, I've got to do the obligatory slow pan across all of my work because I put in a lot of work and I felt like it deserved it. After getting the tops and the bottoms cut out of all of those cans, it was time to stick them together. So what I did was I measured out an initial strip of this aluminum tape and used that to measure a whole bunch of strips so that I wouldn't have to measure and cut for each can, which ended up saving me a ton of time. Once I had all of those strips cut out, it was time to finally start sticking the cans together and start building the tubes for the solar heater. So as you can see here, I just pulled the paper backing off and then just wrapped it around the top and bottom of each can and it actually made for a pretty nice sturdy tube. And here's four of the completed tubes before painting. Unfortunately, I did have to put my puppy in his pen because he really wanted to chew on them, so had to make sure he couldn't get to them. And finally, it was time for paint. Now, the type of paint I used was actually a high temperature engine enamel paint, and the main reason I used this was because it drives super quickly. It will actually dry within 10 to 15 minutes, at least it will dry to the touch. Unlike normal black spray paint, which takes, you know, sometimes 30 minutes to an hour to dry. So this way, I could spray paint an entire row of cans, and within 10 minutes I could lay it down and move on to the next one. Unfortunately, I did actually run out of that kind of paint, so I ended up having to use some black caliper paint that I had, which is why it is shiny on this can stack here and at the tops of those other ones. So the next thing I did was actually take some insulation styrofoam and measure out some evenly spaced holes, and then I used my hole saw and pushed it into the styrofoam to make the perfect circles, and then I cut them out. These are actually to hold the tubes in place inside of the solar heater. I ended up making two of these, one for the top and one for the bottom of each of the tubes. And this is my final product. This was actually the first one that I built. So I ended up using that first one as a template for my second one. I traced around the edge of each of those holes so I knew how big to cut them and where exactly to cut them, then I wouldn't have to spend forever measuring them all out again. I had actually built the box earlier and it's made out of two two foot by two foot pieces of styrofoam, as you can see I taped them in the middle. And I also got two four foot boards and two two foot boards which make up the sides and the top of that box and it's all just held together with that aluminum duct tape. Like I said, this is just a prototype so I wanted to be able to take it back apart if I needed to which is why it's taped and not screwed or nailed together. 
Now that I have the two holders cut out for my tubes, it was time to put those in and start putting the tubes in and make sure everything fit together. Once I got everything situated where I wanted it to be in there, I took some of the aluminum tape and put it on the styrofoam to hold the lower styrofoam in place just to keep it from moving so that I could keep everything in place where I wanted it to be as I started putting in the rest of the heating tubes. And of course, I can't do anything without my puppy coming over to check on me and see what I'm doing and see if there's anything he can get his mouth on to chew on. <laughs> and this is what it finally looked like once I got all of the tubes in place and secured everything with more of the aluminum tape. And I really was happy at this point with how it was looking because it actually looked like a solar heater finally and it wasn't just an idea stuck in my head and a bin of random parts. <laughs> So once I had all of that secured, it was time to cut the hole in the top so that I could get the hot air out and into my house. And unfortunately when the hole saw went through, it did actually fall through and hit a few of the cans and knock them out of place. So I did have to realign those and get them put back into place, but once it was vacuumed and they were back in place, we were ready for the front glass. Now the front glass is actually an acrylic sheet, just because I didn't want to use actual glass, because it's really hard to cut without shattering it, and it's not as good of an insulator as the acrylic sheet is, so I just got a big acrylic sheet from Home Depot and cut out the size I needed for the solar heater, and then, of course, more aluminum tape, taped it in place, and that was basically it. The only other thing I needed to do was add a fan to blow the air through. So the fan I ended up going with was just a basic CPU cooler fan that I just had lying around, and it looked like it would work. Then it was finally time to test it and see if, how well it would actually work. Unfortunately, the day I tested it was a little bit cloudy, but there was enough sun shining through that I figured I could at least get a good test. So as you can see here, the weather on this day that I tested it was actually pretty chilly. It was like 46, 47 degrees outside. So I just left the thermometer out there for a little while, let it get down to the actual temperature of the air. And then once I brought it over the fan to measure how warm the air coming out was, I was actually pretty surprised with how much, even on a cloudy day, how much this raised the air temperature. And by the end of it, we got up to about 69 degrees. So I was pretty happy with even on a cloudy day, it raising the air temperature from 43 degrees clear up to 70 degrees. So that's where I stopped with this project. Uh, eventually I may want to add like an Arduino so it'll automatically turn on and off on its own and control the temperature coming out on its own. But for now it is working great. I've actually installed a solar panel on it so it is 100% free heat for our house and it keeps the office in our house up around almost 80 degrees a lot of the days. And if we get a clear sunny day, It'll put out about 110 degree air, even when it's only 45 or 50 degrees outside. So I'm pretty happy with it. But eventually I do want to build a bigger one, so that will be coming. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in the next video. So see you guys then. Bye.